Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of C++ Crash Course. My name is Nick, and today we're going to go over the uh, third key principle of object-oriented programming. So just as a refresher, uh, the first one was encapsulation, and that's where we stuck uh, similar things together. So if we had, uh, say, a specific print operation for printing a vector, we'd make a method within a, our vector class to print out the points of the vector. Then the second thing we looked at was uh, uh, inheritance. So sometimes it's useful to have a parent class and then have derived classes, especially when you know we have lots of classes that say share something similar. Like uh, in our example, we use cars um, and vehicles. So you know both cars and trucks are both vehicles, so they share things that all vehicles share. But cars have some very particular things that we can put in our own car class. And then trucks have some things we can put in our particular uh, truck class. And then we share things through that uh, parent vehicle class. Now the third thing, well, the third kind of key principle of object-oriented programming is polymorphism. And you know that literally translates to many shapes. So sometimes it's convenient for us to represent uh, objects in a different way. So in this case, we're going to be looking at specifically if we have uh, a, a car class um, and a truck class that are both vehicles, there may be times that we want to represent our car as a vehicle or a truck as a vehicle. And the reason why is maybe we have a specific function or uh, that maybe only takes, say, uh, a vehicle as an argument or say that you know we want to make a function that only takes a vehicle as an argument we can still pass cars and trucks, uh, cars and truck objects into that function, even though that it only takes a vehicle. And that's through this, uh, this idea of polymorphism. So let's go ahead and look at uh, the classes that we're going to be using today. So we'll start out with some very similar things that we've seen before, which is this vehicle class, a car class, and a truck class. Now, there's going to be a couple uh, differences here though. Specifically, we're going to introduce something new, and that's this virtual keyword. So this virtual uh, has something to do with uh, what's known as dynamic dispatch, and that's where uh, you know it, it's part of polymorphism, where we are trying to decide which version of a specific method that we're going to use at runtime. So in the case of uh, our example here, we're going to have a get description method, and that's just going to return a quick string that describes the vehicle, the car, or the truck. Now the car and the truck have specific values that their get description method has that the uh, base class of vehicle does not. So remember vehicle only has two fields and that is string, uh, a string for the license plate and then an integer for the year of the car. Now the car has both of those as well as uh, it has a style associated with it. So this could be like a two-door car or a four-door car. And the truck has its specific version of get description that includes this extra field of bed length. So how big is the bed of the truck? So, you know, if we say, you know, do us something similar to casting, where we try to represent a truck as a vehicle instead of as a truck object, which uh, method should we use? Should we use this one that has a field method, even though we're calling it, or, or this one that has an extra field of uh, bed length, even though that we're representing a truck as a vehicle? Should we pick the one that's to the truck or the one that's to the vehicle? And so we kind of decide that with this virtual uh, keyword. This virtual keyword says that even if I represent a car as a vehicle or I represent a truck as a vehicle, I still want you to use the specific method associated with car or associated with vehicle. Now, if we get rid of this uh, virtual keyword and we just make it a normal method, uh, what happens is we will just call this, this base class method of get description. So we'll see how that works. So first we'll use it as a, uh, as a virtual function, or as uh, we'll use this keyword virtual here. Uh, and then we have another uh, way that we can use virtual, which is down here. And that's if we set this uh, method equal to zero. And that looks kind of funny. 
uh, but this has a very particular purpose. No, we're not assigning any actual value of zero to something. What this says right here is that the base class will not implement this method. So that means that you can't have a base class on its own because if you try to call get description on it, well, you're out of luck. It doesn't implement get description. Uh, so this relies on every other derived class to implement get description and that vehicle will not implement it. And so we consider a class that does this an abstract class. So that means that you can't actually have a vehicle standalone class. So you can't make an object that's a vehicle. You have to make one of the derived classes instead. So we'll go ahead and we will look at uh, our main function now. So if we go to polymorphism.cpp, here we'll start out by making two different, uh, two different objects, a car and a truck each with their associated, uh, for their associated constructors, the car takes a license, a year, and then a style, and then the truck takes a license, a year, and then the, the bed length. And then here, because we're not using an abstract class yet, it just, uh, the vehicle only takes two things for its constructor, and that is a license and a year. So we'll go ahead and print out get description. So for this one, it will print out the entire description, including the style. And here, uh, the truck will go ahead and do the same thing. So it will print out the license, the year, and also the bed length field. While the vehicle, of course, will only print out, it only has two things associated with it, or two fields to print, which will be the, uh, the license and the year. Now here, what we do is something a little bit tricky. So what we do is we represent both of the original objects of car and truck as vehicle now. So we make a vehicle pointer, v2 and v3, and we assign it the address of our car object and the address of our truck object. So even though that this pointer really points to a car object, this pointer thinks it points to a vehicle object. However, because we use virtual functions, it will still call the correct get description. So V2 will call the, the get description for the car object, and V3 will call the get description of the uh, truck object. And so we'll see what happens if we remove the virtual uh, instead. So let's go ahead and compile this. Call G++ for polymorphism, and we'll go ahead and run polymorphism. So we see that if the car and truck are represented, uh, and we just call this on the actual objects himself, the car and the truck object, we get exactly what we expect from that get description. And then same thing with the car. Now, if we uh, assign a new vehicle pointer to the address of car and truck, it will still call that correct uh, version of method because we declare that as virtual. Uh, so that, that again is that dynamic dispatch we're talking about. So let's go ahead and see what happens if instead, let's go back to our interface, if we get rid of this virtual. So if we get rid of this virtual, what happens is we know uh, it will no longer try to look for the specific method that belongs to a uh, car or truck. Uh, it thinks it's a vehicle now. It will not try to do any crazy dynamic or not any, any kind of dynamic dispatch where it looks for the, uh, the uh, derived classes method for get description. It will just call the vehicles version. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll compile again. We'll run it. And we see that now these two use the base classes version of get description. All right. And then as one more thing, so let's go ahead and add that back. Let's actually comment it out. Now what happens if we do this? If we do virtual const uh, this equal to zero. So I said previously that this means that we can't have any vehicle uh, objects anymore because it's an abstract class now. And so it does not actually implement a get description. So we can't have an object uh, that is a vehicle class anymore. So let's see what happens. So we get this error. And that's because cannot declare variable v1 to be abstract type vehicle. So as soon as we do that, as soon as we make it an abstract class, we no longer can uh, declare a variable v1 that's an abstract type. Okay, so that's going to do it for today. 
as always, if we go to github.com slash coffee before arch, where all of this code is hosted, if we go to C++ Crash Course, we've got links to all the other videos and the files associated with those videos, an email to get in contact, and then if we go ahead and go to classes and polymorphism, uh, we have the examples that we went over today. So feel free to download this, check it out, play around with it, and let me know if you have any questions. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.